what's selling right now? Yeah, well, I've, I talked to a wholesaler recently and he just said he got out of the wholesaling game completely when this all started. Build your core team and you know invest in a market where you know it's gonna be more stable over time. Welcome back to the REI hot seat, reunited at last. Jake and I are back in the same room after four weeks apart. Jake, yeah. how, was, how was Whistler? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just got back. A bit of a, a bit of a nightmare trying to get back here, though. We had two flights canceled on us. Snow. Yeah. And uh, and uh, delays after delays. So hopefully your yeah. experience was a bit better coming back. Yeah, Florida. Florida was good. The weather here is not as good, but um, we're back. Lots of exciting stuff. Got the uh, investing in the U.S. mastermind coming up on uh, Saturday, so it's going to be a busy, crazy week for me. Right on. Uh, but yeah, we're getting this this episode out. Uh, we were sitting here talking about what are we going to what are we going to talk about today? Like we looked at some deals, and um, not that it wasn't a good deal, but it kind of brought up the question: What's selling right now? Mm -hmm. Last week I did an episode uh, update, just talking about uh, that I saw some signs that the market is kind of bottoming out for now uh, whether you know i could be completely wrong about that yeah but check out that episode if you haven't already seen that um i saw some signs that maybe the market's bottoming out uh in in their seller sentiment you were telling me is kind of changing yeah so no, tell me a bit about that like yeah, what's that's... this this episode is about what's selling what is seller sentiment right now what's buyer sentiment right now yeah. and where do we see that going yeah just just our opinions of course yeah um no, so for sure. I think that's a great question, Andrew. And like that's why we that's why we wanted to actually we had a property and then we said scrap it. Yeah, we're not Let's talking do about this this yeah. week and something next week because yeah. I think this is a really important conversation to have. Yeah. Um the and it's interesting you say that uh, and it's interesting what you predicted on on last week's episode uh, because it's exactly what I'm seeing in the market right now, which is um, a lot of people have feel that we we are at the bottom. Right. There's mm -hmm. things that are there's brighter days ahead. It, I just keep hearing that. Right. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Is, you know, the seller that's been sitting on the market where literally two weeks ago, you know, he was saying I, VTB, I'll give you VTB, bring an offer, bring an offer. All of a sudden I speak with them this week and it's and they're actually saying, well, I'm not too keen on doing a VTB now. Um, you know, yeah. I feel the market is going to start coming back. So se are seller start. optimism so is coming seller back. optimism is coming back right now, whether that's. Yeah falsely placed i don't know yeah but, um that's at least what i'm seeing right now mm. and, and and so we've 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 kind of seen a halt on the price reductions and so they're slowing down the price reductions less inventory but inventory that's like sitting right now we still yeah. have the same issue it's still right? in, well you're always gonna have sellers that inappropriately price or, or are a little too aggressive on their price yep. and the consequences you said yeah you could still find somebody but it's probably gonna take longer for sure and yeah. and, and no and i, and I want to say like i what I'm saying, it doesn't mean that the, that the issue in the market has fixed itself right now. We still have buyers yeah. looking for deals. We still have sellers that our expectations are, are here. Yeah. Well, right? I've, I talked to a wholesaler recently and he just said he got out of the wholesaling game completely when this all started because the seller resistance to the lower prices yeah. was just too high. Yeah. They, their head was still stuck in, in you know January 2022. Yeah when it's a very different landscape in, you know, June, 2022, mm -hmm. you know, they had to adjust their expectations. And what he was finding is it was just too much of a discussion. He had to, he had to convince people and they still now, no, nope, not doing it. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's kind of like trying to buy a property for some, from somebody and offering them less than they paid. Yeah. It's like a non-starter. But that's the case in actually a lot of the scenarios. Right? Yeah. Like you speak with these, like legitimately, right? You speak with a lot of the owners, a lot of people that are selling and they go, well, I bought this a year ago for more, right? And now you want me to sell it to you for, for less yeah. after I put X amount yeah, of work it's, into it's it? An, it's, it's emotional, right? Like it's, it's not it's not based on logic or looking at the market. It's a it's their emotion. Yeah. I put this, therefore my equitable interest is this. I want that back. Correct. Um, yeah, they would have no uh, no problem if it got way more than they put into it, of course, but uh, always. Yeah, we all that's why we play this game yeah exactly yeah. and and so it's 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 interesting so we'll see what happens over the next little bit i think right now is a, like yeah. a, a bit of a a bit of a turning point right um i don't know if you touched on this last week but the bank of canada did come out and say they're going to pause rates like yeah there's been a, there's, yeah and i was talking about that last week there's been a bit of a ping pong like back and forth they are they're not um so there was some optimism with the job projections and then yep. in, in, core inflation seemed to have slowed down uh, that's just relativity effect, which I explained last week. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, again, everything's our opinion here, guys. Like we're not we're not giving advice; we're just t giving you our take. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, what I wanted to get at here yeah, was was 
what you're seeing, like, yes, you're seeing some seller resistance again. Like, so, mm -hmm. so on the multi side of things, I think you have more objective business people a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. They see what the market's doing. They're, okay, well, I got to adjust. Uh, whereas, you know, homeowners, that's an entirely mm -hmm. different ball of wax. So, what's the seller sentiment? They don't want to do the VTBs. Um, is a five cap getting it done? Is it more of a six cap? Yeah. What areas, you know, give me an idea. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and obviously, I'm just going to talk about a, from from my experience, what I'm seeing in the market, there's obviously a spectrum. People come to me and say, I'm only buying if it's an eight cap. I'm only buying if it's an eight, seven and a half cap. Well, if it's a car wash, you'd probably expect an eight sure, cap, right? right? But, but we're talking multifamily yeah. asset yeah. class, right? And then there's some people that are still interested at the fours and the fives, um, but want that creative deal. So mm -hmm. it's just what we've, what I've seen in the last, let's call it three, four months, is uh, a lot of the sellers were getting very creative. Right. Let's do let's do VT vendor take let's backs, do mortgage yeah. assumptions. Yeah. There's there's yeah. a whole bunch of stuff we're working on. Um, mm -hmm. Not saying that that's not happening now, but I feel like because there seems to be the light at the end of the tunnel here, um, people are starting to kind of sellers are just their, getting a little yeah, more resistance. Yeah, yeah. And are hey, buyers getting more optimistic? Because I know anecdotally, like I was talking to Matt Piche, he's like, we're fully back at yep. it. Like we're fully buying, flipping again. Yep. Like he he feels that it's kind of for sure bottomed and, out and, enough, and, and, and he's and he's ready to go. Some buyers are, some yeah. buyers aren't. Again, it's kind of hard to nail it down. But mm -hmm. what what we're seeing is is yes, their buyer sentiment is getting better. Mm -hmm. um, I still think we have a month or two months to go before. That's yeah. fully back in action. It takes time for people yeah. to come to terms with it. Yeah. It, it. It will actually take years for for sellers of like homes to fully come to terms with the yeah. the loss of price. So they'll, they'll keep holding on to that as temporary. I'm not saying it's not temporary, but in the case that it wasn't temporary and it was going to stay, yeah. uh, it would take them years. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So but 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 the message here is that things are looking up. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the market's going to rebound. Yeah. Well, my here. main reason for saying it was inventory was was down. Yeah. I was I looked at some Hamilton stats, saw inventory coming down mm -hmm. significantly, mm -hmm. um, and that's a sign because equilibrium price is based on supply and demand. If your supply goes down, equilibrium price, all other things held constant, has yeah. to go up. And we've seen that in multifamily yeah. for sure. The yeah. multifamily supply is like way down, way down. Right, yeah. we're, we're, there's not much out there. The stuff that is out there is sitting. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few things popping up here and there once a week, twice a week. Yeah. A new building comes up um, and we'll look at it. We'll yeah. take a quick peek and it, you know, whether so, it works or not. So we've gotten a little bit of seller sentiment, a little bit of buyer sentiment. There are there are some people that are back at it now. Mm -hmm. I, I need to get a couple of more horse, wholesalers, um, you know, on here and just chat. Yeah. Uh, see what their sentiment is like are they ready to go out and start start uh driving it again i did just get uh, a wholesaler card in the mail yeah so it's it's starting to happen again yeah i get them every once in a while yeah they're always coming in there um yeah. but yeah so what what are we seeing selling right now what what is selling what are people buying um i don't think the metrics have changed too much we're still looking you know we want to see cap rates north of five north of right? five in the, like in the secondary markets Right, downtown Toronto very different. But Toronto's a different animal. What yeah. about like a downtown Burlington, or does that, that doesn't even really exist? Burlington's a, a yeah. weird market, right? Burlington's always been a, a super premium market for rental. Right. So let's talk Hamilton. Then. Yep. So downtown Hamilton is it same thing north of five? Yeah, we're still yeah. looking north of five. Like that's the things that are actually moving, right? Those are the and ones is that, that stabilized, or are you still getting you know a three cap selling when it's got you know people renting since 1980? Uh, it depends on the interest rates, right? It depends on the interest rates and how you're financing that. So. Um, yeah. Yes, we've put a deal together, a sub five deal. And it's like um, a burr, like people burr. are, are yeah, going a sub in. Five, okay. A sub five cap burr. Uh, yeah. However, we needed aggressive terms. We needed a, a nice big long VTB on that yeah. um, with a good rate. So we're still seeing those assumptions. Yeah. We're still seeing those VTBs as king. Those are the ones that are getting the deals done right now. Yeah. So if you can offer that, that's my go-to. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many benefits for the even the vendor to offer a VTB tax deferral yeah. things like that and you know if anybody has questions about VTBs reach out yeah um, but that's really where where I'd like to see my sellers go right now as well is say hey if we can offer that VTB let's build a nice structure here yeah right, let's put something together or we go talk to the the financing people um, the CMHC, the MLI mm -hmm. Select people. Hey, how would you yeah, guys structure yeah. this? Get right? your angle. Don't just be another commodity on the, on the market. Yeah. Uh, I just listed one in Florida, and one of the things we did is we actually offered. Um, basically, we're offering a mortgage payment on our listing because as a seller, I'm willing to buy down the rate, mm -hmm. and you can do that in Florida. You can actually pay their closing costs, mm -hmm. and you can also contribute to their. So basically, buying down their mortgage rate. Yeah, uh, yeah, and so and something I coach all my. You know, all my team members of is is don't 
don't be the realtor that puts in three, four expenses and sends it out. Yeah, be right? authentic. Do, yeah. Be authentic. Like actually run the numbers. How are we actually putting this deal? Yeah, together? like a real proposal because people can smell BS. Like you, yeah. you got to gotta be real about it. Okay, so there are real numbers here. And actually the deal we were just looking at, I was commenting to you. I'm like, oh, they're actually giving real numbers here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, and, and that, but that's what people want to see right now. Yeah. Right? They're really diving into the minutiae right now. They go, what yeah. are the numbers? How are we structuring the deal? It's very easy to pick up the phone, call a commercial mortgage broker and say, hey man, take a look at this or you know, let me know how you would finance this. Yeah. Right. And let's build a structure. We do in a first and a second mortgage. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, and you can a, a do bridge, that, right? Right. You so. can you can do first and seconds. The, the problem institutionally is if you want a second mortgage, uh, you can't put it on the subject property. So well, you can if it debt services. Yeah, there's a, there's like one or two lenders that'll allow that, and I think some of the credit unions will. It's just the challenge will be the debt service. Uh, but it, it, there is a, a chance that that works for sure. Uh, again, just about getting creative yeah. and finding a way to make the deals work. There are ways to make deals work. And 100%. I think, so that's, those are the ones that are really happening yeah. now, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. No. And that, and that's, you know, and that's a nice, and I know I've said this many times on the podcast, but that's a nice thing about this current market is you have time to figure out have how time to, time to figure it works. out. Yeah. Things aren't flying off the shelves overnight. Right. Yeah. Um, that might change coming forward. Right. Yeah. I, I truly believe like if you're asking my crystal ball, my opinion is I think in the next year, um, and I could be completely wrong, but yeah. I, I really believe that we have hit bottom. I don't mm. think interest rates are going to bounce back to 1%. No. But I think over the next year, we're going to stay where we are. Maybe a subtle, another increase, maybe a subtle decrease, but yeah. sticking right where we are, right? We're going to mm. have a, an interesting year. It's yeah. going to be a great opportunity to make deals happen, mm -hmm. very unique deals and have the time to do so. Yeah. And then by, by the next year following, yeah. I think we're going to be back in a really hot market. Um, and that's very possible. This, right? Very possible based on what we see. It's again, we're all just, you know, making our best guess. Uh, but seeing the inventory coming down, knowing the housing supply crisis that we have, plus all these developers didn't do their new starts this past year because mm -hmm. there was so much uncertainty. So we already had a housing deficit uh, be pent up demand of like two, two to 300,000 uh, houses a year. Um, it's only going to be even more. Yeah. So, so the the supply issue is fundamental. It's there and it's fundamental. Um, demand is artificially suppressed by these interest rates. Mm -hmm. It's not fixing any problem, uh, but it is artificially suppressing that demand. But once you reduce those interest rates, or people find a way to put it together, they still need a place to live. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's why it's always been hard to predict this mm -hmm. because. You know, if they really wanted to fix inflation, they would focus on supply. Mm -hmm. How do we make it cheaper for people to offer these services? How do we yeah. uh, make it cheaper for people to build? Uh, get costs down by facilitating uh, smooth transactions. Remove some of the red tape. Remove red tape. Or help, even help drop with, some regulation. Yeah, devel yeah. development costs, right? Like Drop just, development charges. Or offset development charges. Yeah. Maybe add more affordable housing yeah. incentives in and stuff like that. Like there's, there's a lot of things that could be done. Um, you know, especially in the, the food side of things, right? There's so many things in the C CPI. And as I mentioned last week, uh, and I've mentioned this on my podcast as well, is um, in your consumer price index is is interest cost. Yeah. They increase interest costs to try and bring CPI down, but it directly partially affects CPI going up. Yeah. It's so silly. Like fix supply, make it easier for people to do business here. Yeah. And, and that fixes the problem. Different discussion. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so so where do you see an opportunity for people right now here in Ontario? Yeah, so um, we're seeing this a lot right now. Um, I know Alberta is really big, Edmonton, Calgary. You sure, know, lots people, of people, people look out, out there. there yeah, invest, right? that's, that's really big right now. Um, that's almost, uh, and I've actually pulled some people back from there saying, hey guys, I know you're looking at those deals, but. These deals aren't that different. They're not, they're honestly not that different, right? Yeah. We have we have a couple a couple different things, put the right team together, um, you know, get a good paralegal, build your build your core team, and you know, invest in a market where you know it's going to mm -hmm. be more stable over time. Yeah. Right? And if you want heavy cash flow, go do some passive mortgage investments. Right. Sure. And, and and that's a conversation I'm having more and more with people. Right. They go, oh, the cash flow, the cash flow, the cash flow. I go, great. I go, split your cash in half. Let's put half of it into a building. Yeah. There's your there's your investment in, in yeah. hard assets, yep. gold, whatever you want it to be, but mm -hmm. I prefer real estate. And then go put your other half of your money into a passive mortgage investment 
Um, yeah, that's private lending investment, right? And and let's yeah, look at you, you can get ten to twelve percent cash on cash. So right? there's your ten yeah. percent cash yeah. on cash you've been asking me for, and here's your yeah. appreciation you've been asking me for. Yeah, there you go. Nice. What's where? Where are we going wrong? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's actually something I really wanted to talk about on the show today was, you know, how are we making the deals come together? Like a strategy to make things work. Yes, it's yeah. Right now, more than ever, with my investors, we're looking at a holistic approach to investing rather than just mm-hmm. this is an investment property that makes sense. You can burr it. You can do this. You can do that. Yeah. Um, I really want people to kind of step back for a minute and say, okay, what what are my goals? What do I need? Yeah. And then use this time in the market where things are a little slower to structure mm-hmm. and act. Imagine uh, that. If that makes sense. A realtor telling you not to buy, not to put all your money in real estate. <laughs> I, and and I, you can go back to one of yeah. my first podcasts. I've always been saying that. Yeah. Right. I've always believed. Uh, yeah. You, know, you don't came sell. On... Don't sell if you don't have to. Yeah. Right. I love when my clients keep the real estate. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, it's not always about um, putting all your eggs in one basket, right? For sure. I mean, I like that you put it that way. It's about it's about a personal choice, right? Like no one can tell you what's right for you uh, unless they actually hear you out and they can give you their opinion on it. Um, but it's all situational. Mm-hmm. Like, what's your situation? What do you need? Yeah. So, yeah. And, cool. I, and just before we head off, yeah. right? Like, I don't want to come on here and say, well, the deal that everybody needs right now is an 8% cap rate in Burlington or Hamilton because that's hard to find. That's not realistic mm-hmm. for me to sit here and say, everybody needs to find that. Yeah. Or everybody needs this or that. Um, so, you do your due diligence. Yeah. Let's talk. Go and from on, there. On that note, we talk a lot of um, t- terminology on this. Uh, earlier episodes, we got you know more deep, deeper into the explanations of of what cap rate is mm-hmm. and all that stuff. MLI Select, those different programs. So if you're new and some of this terminology isn't isn't uh, sticking, go back to the first episode of REI Hot Seat. It's it's only been up for three months now, mm-hmm. so it's relatively new. Um, if you still have questions after that, I can direct you to uh, early episodes of the podcast, which are quite a bit older, uh, but the fundamentals are already all there. Yeah. So um, with that said, Jake, if people want to uh, to reach out to you, uh, knowing that you're crushing it with the multifamily commercial stuff, uh, and you also do a lot of other stuff, mm-hmm. but uh, if they want to kind of find out about what's hot, what deals are available, a lot of off-market stuff that you bring on the show, what do, yep. what do they do? Yep, so as always, link in the, in the description below. Yeah. Click the link. We'll be in touch. Uh, we always reach out with a phone call. Okay. Right? So try to make yourselves available, or you can even send us a message in that link and just say, "Hey, this time works best." Um, we'll reach out. We'll have that initial conversation. We'll have what's called a real estate action plan. Yeah. Right. So you come on. We talk about exactly what we just did in the show today. Right. Holistic investing. What yeah. are you looking to get out of this? Why are you investing? Whether it's your tenth, your first, your fifth property. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your goals, where you want to invest, why you want to invest there. Um, that's a 15, 20 minute conversation. That's all I yeah. like to do on the first go around. From there, we set up a plan of action for you and we'll go into whether it's education sessions, right? We can recommend some education sources, Andrew's podcast, this and that, or it could be, Hey, let's get out and see a property this weekend or mm-hmm. tonight. Right. And it, yeah. it, it makes sense. So, or, and anywhere in between. So, um, you know, don't hesitate to sign up if it's an initial phone call and, and, you know, you get what you need out of it. Great. Let's continuously keep in touch. And when you're ready to buy, we can. Mm -hmm. If you're ready to buy tomorrow, we'll go make that happen. Um, So sign up and let's just have that initial call and and see where everybody's at. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So if you made it this far, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, show us some love in the comments. Oftentimes it's, you know, me hanging out in those comments. (laughs) Um, Maybe Jake can put a comment in there. Anyways, we will see you next week. Thanks for watching. See you guys then.